Thanks so much for being here today. Today's video is the first in a tithering series I originally built out for an exclusive group of people. In this series, there's gonna be around 10 videos. This content was once exclusive for paid members, but now I'm gonna give it free to everyone. If you wanna help support and promote free content like this, get your archery gear from shatterproofarchery.com, including uh, bamboo for bow making, fiberglass, tillering strings, tillering gizmos, bowstring wax. For your archery and bow making needs, go to shatterproofarchery.com. With that, Go make the best bow you can. Enjoy the course. What's up, fellow bowyers? That's right, we're gonna make some sweet, sweet bows. First, I wanna lay a little bit of the structure of the course so that you know how to navigate it and you know what to expect. So the first thing is, each video is gonna have a number and then the title. The number is just the order I'm posting the videos. And that isn't super important, actually. You can skip around all you want to do. The videos are on different topics, so you could have a limb twist or basic hand tools or how to use power tools or how much wood to remove. As you look through the course, you can choose the topic that you may be interested in or you can just go from the beginning to the end. And all those topic videos are five to 15 minutes long. But we've got some case study videos where I'm gonna go through the entire tillering of let's say like this one back here is a reflex deflex bow. And I'm gonna show from start to finish, from floor tillering to shooting the bow, how I would tiller that bow. I'm also gonna do a D bow, and then we can expand that as far as we want to and as far as there's interest in the future. So the case studies may be closer to an hour long videos of the entire process, and then I'm covering individual topics. If I don't cover something in this course, a topic that you're interested about, let me know, and I would love to make another video to help you guys build the best bows possible to reach your goals. As far as bow making goes, I'm gonna walk through my experience and my method and my, my different methods, I guess I should say, with you guys. There are a lot of different ways to accomplish the same goal, so if you find another method or something that works better for you, I say absolutely go for it. The one thing I say about bow making is there are no rules. And by thinking about it that way, we can improve and find out new ways to do things to make the bows even better. So. I'm filming this whole course now. There's a good chance in two years I disagree with something I say. So take the meat, throw out the bones, and enjoy this course. Thanks so much for being here. Make a great bow. Send me pictures, videos, updates of what you are doing, and I'll see you guys inside the course. I am convinced that the absolute best way to make the bow that you want is to have the end goal in mind first. Literally, what are you looking for? Are you looking for a really, really, really fast bow that you can throw a light arrow on and enter some tournaments or some 3D shoots with your own handmade bow? Or are you looking to find a really sweet balance between speed, but you want a lot of power and you want a lot of comfortability and you really want it to be quiet because you're gonna take this out hunting and you're gonna have maybe one of the highest adrenaline rushes Ever, or at least I've said experience, using my own bow to go out and hunt that I built myself. That, that's an experience, that's amazing. Are you looking to build a bow for your kid or your nephew or something? Are you looking to build a bow for a friend? What would they like? You gotta have this end in mind. So I encourage you to write it down. Write down exactly what you want. What do you want? Here's an example. Right now, what I would write down is I want a smooth shooting bow because the longer I'm in archery, the more I care about smoothness rather than speed. And then secondly, right now, I think I would like a bow that's around 45 pounds at a 29 inch draw. And I want this one to be a hunting bow. So for me, that's my goal, a 29 inch draw at a 45 pound bow that's super smooth to shoot. What's your goal? When you know that, then we can get there. The overall goal of tillering. Let's think about this. Let's take a step back and let's think about this from a 30,000 foot view, so to speak. I think this is really important because there's no rules. I think we can do whatever we want, but there are some principles. There are physics, I guess you could say, that when you break these laws and these rules, consequences might happen. 
On a zoomed out view of bow making, tillering, this is my definition, is the process of removing wood off of, or material, remo removing wood or material off of a bow so that it bends in a way to where the bow shoots the way you like it to. That could open up a lot of possibilities. If you just say, let's make the limbs bend evenly, is that tillering? It is, but you are erasing a bunch of possibilities off the table. So we're going to tiller this bow. We're gonna make a bend in a way that we like to shoot it. Okay, let's move forward a little bit more. What causes a bow to break? Well, if there's too much stress for the material to handle, it breaks. So if you remove way too much material off of one section of the bow, so much so that the material there can't handle the stress, then it's gonna break. So this is where material choice comes into play. So let's take three of the top bow making materials. Fiberglass is going to be the strongest material. That's five times stronger than bamboo. Meaning you could screw up on your tillering five times worse than you could with a bamboo backing and it still possibly be okay. Well, let's jump down to bamboo. Bamboo is a really strong backing material. It's gonna be up there with sinew. Now, it's still a lot stronger than if you had, let's say, a single growth ring backing of a bow. That's gonna be less strong. And so, the less strong material you use on the bow backing, the more precise we need to be because the less room of air we have in the tillering. I think it's important to step back and look at tillering as a whole and to look at the process as a whole and just think mentally, okay, yeah, yeah, let's not, let's not make any part of this stress more than another. Because if we do, then that part could break. Here's an example right here from a crossbow uh, video I just made recently. Let's, uh, let's see what part of this is bending more than the others. So when, when I pull this, you can kind of see right in here and right in the middle on that left limb, especially the middle on the left, left limb, this is where it's the weakest. So if I drew this bow back until it broke, I could almost predict where it's gonna break. So from this information, I would just know in my mind, mm, let's avoid this spot. Let's remove wood over here, balancing this out. And that's the goal, to not overstress any part of the bow. If not a single part of your bow is overstressed, then it can't break. That's the goal of tillery. Mindset in anything in life is so important. Um, we become what we think about, our mind controls our actions. And so if we have the right mindset when we're making a bow, there's a greater chance it doesn't break. So let's jump into what kind of mindset we need to have. So something that happens quite often is going too fast. You go too fast when you're building a bow. And this personally has happened to me. So I do like kind of my floor tillering and my initial tillering to go from a piece of wood that I can't move to starting to bend it. And I do that on the belt sander. So from there, I'm like, okay, we're moving to control. Let's go to a scraper and I start using a scraper to remove wood. And I feel like I've went between the tillering tree and my vise to scrape wood 15 times. And I'm like, I'm not making progress. I need to hog off a lot more wood. Go back to the belt sander, go again, come back to the tillering tree and I've got a hinge. And it's like, what? And it's because I got impatient. I lost control because I wanted speed and the bow broke. So going too fast is one of the biggest reasons bows break. Now with that being said, I tillered an entire bow with the belt sander before. Well, I tillered it to shooting. I did do some fine tweaking with the um, scraper, but it can be done. And so I'm not saying don't do that, that's your choice but just the rule to keep in mind is the faster wood removal tool, the quicker and easier it is to break the bow. And for our mindset, you gotta know your skill level with the tool you're using, cause you may be a wizard on a belt sander and just go after it, maybe go up to higher grits and you're good to go. 
Um, or maybe you want to go all completely traditional, no power tools, hand tools, both of them are super fun, but you gotta have the right mindset knowing what you're trying to accomplish with what tool and not aimlessly removing wood because that'll lead to a broken bow quite often. When I was making uh, my very first bows, I had this mindset where it's like everything, I put all the weight on that one bow and I didn't, I wasn't able to source a lot of wood and I think that was part of it, but like I was so, so, so scared to break the bow. And I think I would have done better if I would have had the mindset of, I'm gonna make this bow as good as I can and if I screw it up, okay, I will, I'll learn from it and then I'll move forward to the next one when I can. And and I didn't have that mindset, and so I was so nervous to break the bow that what happens quite often with a new bowyer is you make a really, really light poundage bow. So I made like a 12 poundage bow when I was going for a 40 poundage bow, because I was like, oh, it might break, so I just keep removing wood until you basically have um, a long ruler type of thing. It's, it, it can happen quite easily, and that's because I had the one and done mindset. Like, if your goal is to make one bow and be done, as like a weekend project, that's totally fine. Uh, I've seen people be really successful with that, especially if you have some woodworking background. When I started bow making, I didn't have a woodworking background, so I didn't know how wood worked real well, and that's where I really struggled. But I see people who have a woodworking background can learn how to tiller pretty well, especially if you can pay attention to detail. And you can do one and done and just have a fun project if you want. But if you really wanna get good at bow making, have the mindset of, I'm gonna learn from this bow, and then I'll move on to the next one and I'm gonna learn from that one. And you take bits and pieces of each piece of wood and each material you work with and you kind of combine them into this full experience of being able to recognize patterns and it's like anything in life, with the more practice, the, the better you get. And so I'd almost say, don't have the one and done mindset, get enough material maybe for three bows or something and then just start knocking them out. And by that third one, you're gonna feel like you knew nothing on the first one. So that's my recommendation, don't have the one and done mindset, but have a learning mindset.